open the door and you step inside. We're inside our hearts. All of this that was bad, that everybody said, oh no, we can't invest in that. The government invested in, and now, and now, A lot of people that find out about this cloning stuff um, find it very frightening. And yes, it is. It is scary. Stars out watch, there, watch and it. that is what they were doing. And you mentioned Kyrie with, with tonight's mm -hmm. uh, draft lottery. We now with have the answer for how that. Yeah. So how do we view that now in totality? She lost him. I'm just proud of that. I'm afraid we lost Rachel. We've lost Rachel Nix. All right, come back. Come back. I'm here. I'm here. You can hear me? I'm back to you, Scott. I'm back. Can you hear me, Rachel? I can. Okay, Rachel. It's one like, last time. It's like television. Bro, watch my nigga Jalen Rose, though. Look at my nigga Jalen Rose. Tell me that ain't that. That's a fucking robot or some shit. That ain't no fucking human being. Look at this nigga. He didn't move, blink, or nothing. A lot of that fear comes from the fact that we've been programmed to believe that we're the only sentient beings on the planet. Now here's what happens when we take a little closer look and merge the two together. Look at that. The image in the middle is the hybrid image. Look at that. Full of cancer. If all of those had cancer, this no. now has it. Okay, so this is uh, uh, Treasuries. You all right? I'm passing out. Okay, are you okay? You want to hang on? I'm passing out. Okay. Why don't you? You want to sit down? Gone. Okay. All right. Oh, 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 oh. You okay? Okay. Somebody help him, please. Somebody help. We'll be back. We'll be back in just a second. You okay? I also get asked a lot, am I a clone? Um, from my understanding, Donald has seen a clone of me in the cloning center. I am memory suppressed, however, I do have memories of what fit the description of the cloning center and the arena. And they put a chip in his body so they could monitor every move he made. And he knew it, they chipped him. As you can see, FBI don't you be watching me. The most unconscious shit get the most airplay. It's like, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? The government. Yeah, and then run up on me talking about keep it real. Don't run up on me saying keep it real if you ain't supporting the real. The you know what I'm saying? Bottom line. The government brainwash our people with the mind control theory. That's what they do. So they make sure people like it. They keep playing that same song. The same song keep playing, you start to like it, you start to get cloned with it, you start to get cloned with it. So then for the clone exists, then it just takes over. It takes over the human body, it takes over the spirit, it takes over the soul. What did you just say? What's wrong with you? What did you just call me? Say my name. Tyler Durden. Tyler Durden, you fucking freak. What's going on? I'm coming over. No, wait, did Marla, I'm not there. <sighs> you broke your promise. You fucking talk to her about me. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? I ask you for one thing. One simple thing. Why do people think that I'm you? Answer me! Shit. Uh, answer me, why do people think that I'm you? I think you know. No, I don't. Yes, you do. Why would anyone possibly confuse you with me? Got it. No.
Do not fuck with us. Say it. Because. Say it. Because we're the same person. That's right. We are the all singing, all dancing crap. I don't understand this. You were looking for a way to change your life. You could not do this on your own. All the ways you wish you could be, that's me. I look like you want to look. I fuck like you want to fuck. I am smart, capable, and most importantly, I'm free in all the ways that you are not. Oh, no. Tyler's not here. Tyler went away. Tyler's gone. What? This is impossible. No, this is crazy. People do it every day. They talk to themselves. They see themselves as they'd like to be. They don't have the courage you have to just run with it. Naturally, you're still wrestling with it, so sometimes you're still you. We should do this again sometime. Other times, you imagine yourself watching me. If this is your first night at Fight Club, you have to fight. Little by little, you're just letting yourself become Tyler Durden. A woman claims a man who looks like Mike Tyson lured her into a sexual assault. Police say the man, claiming to be the, box, the former boxer's manager, invited a woman to an after-hours club in Houston over the weekend, and that is where the victim says the look-alike sexually assaulted her. Now, the look-alike even has a tattoo similar to the one Tyson has on his own face. The real Mike Tyson heard about the investigation and shared a photo taken with fellow celebrity Jenny McCarthy. It places him in Florida when the incident in Houston took place. Some things need to be addressed, and this is one of them. We need to really talk about this, um, the cloning issue. Some of you all have no idea of what cloning is about. You can't comprehend or muster what I'm getting ready to tell you, okay? So enjoy the ride. And But before I start it, I just, I just want to say this, and I... Uh, and I hope that some of you guys with broad minds can gravitate to it. And those who can't, you're going to do what you do anyway. Become a keyboard warrior. I don't give a fuck. Do whatever you feel. This particular show is going to be like no other. Because I, I'm going to get right down. I'm going to tell you some things that you probably going to not believe. Because most of y'all don't believe no way. It's going to be a small percentage that grab it. And y'all going to take it to the next level. Which you should. Now see... This is why I need to talk about cloning because some of y'all think cloning only exists in the entertainment world. That's not true. It has nothing to do with the industry. Why is cloning is needed? They started the cloning process in 1945. One of the reasons they killed JFK because JFK decided we, we didn't need to clone humans. And they said, come on, Jay, stop, stop BSing. And they saw that he was serious. It was two reasons why they killed JFK. He was against Vietnam. He felt like it was a useless war. And he found out that what they were cloning people, he wanted to expose the Illuminati. And he said, damn it, it's time for him to go. So if you think in cloning only exists in the industry, they want anybody that can lead a people. Anytime somebody tell you they'll pay for your airfare because they want to battle you and they want you to be a part of this battling, don't you take that plane ticket, man. Because nine times out of ten, when you get there, they're going to put something in your drink. You ain't going to remember shit because when you wake up, you're going to be under hypnosis. You don't think the reptile is real? The reptile is very real. You don't think lizards are, from the demigods exist? The, the only way that these demigods can live, they have to get into a human format. Because their life as, as reptiles is only so long. They have to be able to be in a human format to live for a long time. And once they get in a human format, they clone that human over and over again. Did y'all know that Gaddafi is not dead? He was cloned? I told you. I got something for you tonight. I'm going to lay it on you. Because a lot of y'all think you want to hear some good stuff. But sometimes y'all just want entertainment. I'm not entertainment. I'm going to give it to you from the hip. Yes, I'm humorous because that's the way the Lord made us. We want to be able to give you some truth but at the same time, you know, have you have a little laughter behind it. But the truth stands alone behind all the, the BS. And after the laughter, the truth still stands on its own. Their dialects in their eyes, their body movement. Sometimes they get sluggish. They forget what they say. They contradict a lot of things they say. And you probably say, well, Yash, uh, I don't get it. 
a lot of them don't have to listen if they want if they think you they didn't they didn't clone malcolm x by the way but if they think you another malcolm x they're gonna clone you first before they kill the first you but there's nobody as powerful like malcolm out here man you understand so i'm just making a point where if you're a person that can move people and get shit started and like i said shit they have an interest in you when they tell you we'll fly you out we want to have a sit down with you they're going to put something in your drink your food some tight way even if they, when they accidentally bump up against you they have a needle that hit you you don't even know what it was it feel like a mosquito bite but they just hit you with a needle and then five minutes later you fall asleep you don't even remember nothing they just put a chip in your neck man Farrakhan is chipped he got the same chipping process as Gaddafi and I wouldn't be surprised if they clone Farrakhan and kill the real Farrakhan and y'all probably say well yeah that don't make sense why would they want to kill Farrakhan and keep because they want to work his mind the man is very intelligent see a lot of times they want to keep you alive just to pimp your brain and when they put you under hypnosis and MLK and they can chip you you totally submissive to them do you know when they put a chip in your body that they can go all the way back 30 40 years and you can tell them things that you didn't want to tell them this is how powerful the technology is dirty here just to keep it dirty Dirty, 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 where we all come from. I, I wanted to document them, actually. Like, you know, I came down, I had my camera, I said, should let me document you, man, and just let it all out. And he says, they're not ready for me to speak right now. They don't want to hear because when I speak, it's over. Let me ask you a question. Everything that we're saying, y'all going to film, y'all going to put out, right? No, we can we edit. Oh, y'all gonna edit. So the good the good shit y'all gonna edit, the bad shit y'all gonna give to the government, right? <laughs> no, come on. Huh? Why should we? So what y'all gonna do with y'all the shit? Why government? should we give it to the government? So what, who y'all gonna give it to? What y'all gonna do with it? I'm gonna send it in, in the show. On the, on the TV channel where I went. So um, what's the sense of us uh, talking this long? It's no, oh, it's no, no problem. It's no problem. I want it this way. I like it. I like it that way. No, no, see, because I want to I wanna make sure that everything I say is gonna happen. Hey, can we get a... In May 2003, ODB was finally released on parole. And they put a chip in his body so they could monitor every move he made. And he knew it. They chipped him. You know, I, you know, it's certain things I don't really want to go into that far. But, you know, but um, where it causes me to lead, to think that, yo, somebody, you know, had put it on. You know what I mean? And he knows because we talked about this. You know what I mean? And then I remember days later, he just was never really acting the same no more. You know, he did a, he did a, a lot of things in this world that was rare. And I wouldn't be surprised if they, his name wasn't on the list. You know what I mean? I wouldn't be surprised if my name ain't on the list. You know what I mean? With the whole Wu-Tang, you know what I mean? You know, we, we different. And sometimes in this country, when you're different and you speak different, you stand out for something different, you stand up for yourself, they put you on the list. Dirty was that kind of man. He wanted real freedom. He expressed real freedom. I don't doubt that somebody was on this case. I don't doubt that somebody was ever trying to hurt him. I don't doubt that people was watching him. He used to say the police, the FBI is after him. They were trying to kill him. I believe it now. It's like, it's not that he's crazy, but I'm saying the things that he says, it's like, damn, how are you seeing what you're saying? I'm not crazy at all, okay? Everybody always saying that Dirty is crazy. Dirty is not crazy at all. Dirty just C, poor C. A lot that a lot of people don't foresee. And by the way, white men are not that damn smart. Neither are these Jewish men. They're getting all this from the demigods, Satan fallen angels. The Lord gave Satan who? Earth. The land been given to the hand of the wicked. Who is the wicked? Satan. Satan have many employers out there. Cloning is one. Reptiles is another. They live in you. And most of these creatures that live in human bodies are reptiles. But once they become of human, they can stay in the human body for a very long time. But if that human body were to get crashed or killed, which they wouldn't because they got powers, don't get it twisted. Okay? But if they did, they have about five more lined up. The first clone may take, uh, I think the, when they first clone a human being, it takes three to six months. 
maybe sometimes a year depending on the technology but usually with the technology they got between six to seven months to clone a human being they need their tissues uh their brain cells and all that they'll clone a human okay um after that first human is cloned they can clone you every hour thereafter so if they want to make 20 of you they could if they want to make 10 of you they could when you saw um Saddam Hussein that was not the real Saddam Hussein he did not die like that Saddam they got rid of Saddam in the early 90s but they were using his clones to have fun with you to be amused that was not the real Saddam but he acted just like him Michael Jackson is not dead Michael Jackson doesn't look anything the way he did the slim Michael Jackson because they know that's what y'all like the Michael Jackson that y'all saw dancing with James Brown that was a clone they had to keep fixing on it because the clone was breaking down. <clears throat> he wasn't going into surgeries. See, clones also can't gain weight. So basically what they did, they had to keep doctoring on the clone of Michael who was uh, alive. The one that was dancing with Michael, or the dance with James Brown. Okay, that Michael Jackson, that wasn't the real Michael. The, the When they cloned it, Michael, that clone clones don't grow hair so in other words however they clone you whatever you have that's how you're going to come out you, that's just how the clone produce so in other words if you're a person that have long hair however they clone you that's how the clone gonna look when they clone michael jackson his hair was never attached because the first michael jackson that was cloned he his head was in a third third to fourth degree burn and pepsi commercial he lost half his head. I mean, it, it wasn't gone, but it was bur bur It was very badly burned. Michael Jackson looked like a monster. Okay, and he was still slim. So they cloned him while he was under the knife. And when they cloned him, they needed two years to remake him because he didn't look nothing like Michael Jackson. I don't know if y'all can peep game. So when they cloned him, they had to make him lighter and make up this skin disease because his skin didn't look the same his body they changed everything about him in the end when michael was looking really really bad the clone body was breaking down because clones don't think like humans clone have to have people around them to tell them what they do because they get adolescents they can't think properly it's called handlers <laughs> right so when Michael started to break down, his body was breaking down. His nose was artificial. I don't know if y'all noticed, go back and Google Michael Jackson nose. It looks like a robot because it wasn't him. His whole head was a wig. It was a cap because when they first cloned Michael, he didn't have any hair. It all burnt off in the Pepsi commercial. They put Michael in a capsule and cloned it brought him back two years as the clone and Michael Jackson was watching all of this like I can't believe they're doing this so what happened to Michael he just lived his life Michael Jackson is still alive he's already appeared on TV but y'all didn't even know who he was go back and watch the CNN of Larry King the guy with the glasses with the, the, the real bad burnt victim that played like Michael Jackson saved him when he was a kid that's Michael Jackson it burned him so bad it disfigured him it, it, it tore up his skin it did everything to him you understand what I'm telling you and also after Michael was cloned the real Michael Jackson they bleached his skin so he would look nothing like Michael if you look at the dude who was on Larry King telling you about his childhood how Michael Jackson helped him he looks just like Michael just look in his eyes and that's Michael Jackson He's disfigured. That's how he looked when he got done with the Pepsi commercial. Joining us now here in Los Angeles, Miko Brando, who was with us almost every night after this untimely passing. Longtime Michael Jackson friend attending the funeral. And Dave Dave. Yes, that's his name, Dave Dave. He was David Rothenberg. He was set on fire in 1983, suffered, as you can see, terrible scars. Michael Jackson befriended him and paid for a lot of his surgeries. Dave Dave is also attending the burial. Why Dave Dave? Well, to liberate myself from the confines of my father's criminality. I he caused the fire? 
Yeah. He, he is a criminal and he uh, caused all this. To, to free myself of his name and his legacy, I decided to become my own person through changing my name. How did he find out about you, Dave? Um, he heard about me and he had contacted me and wanted to meet me. How old were you at the time? I was about seven years old at the time. And were you in the hospital? I was not in the hospital at the time. I was, I was in interim back and forth from surgery. And what did he do for you? Well, basically, he befriended me. He, um, he took me into his life, which is very rare for Michael to do. But he opened up his arms to me and accepted me as a very good friend of his. And throughout the years, he never let me go. Were you surprised, Dave, to hear from him when you were seven? Oh, it, it's a very interesting story, Larry. Um, it was kind of, um, the visit to his Encino house was very impromptu, and it was kept a secret by my mother. And I had always been kind of a admirer of his, mm -hmm. not a fan per se, but I always loved his music. And my mother surprised me one day and brought me up to Neverland. And I entered an arcade, and there were all these Paul McCartney records all over this, The Girl Is Mine, and you know, this and that. And I remember sitting down, and at the time, my, my favorite video games, my favorite video game was Pole Position. And I was playing Pole Position, and I, I felt a little tap on my shoulder, and I turned around, and there was Michael. Hold and, right and you know what, Larry? What? At that moment, we we embraced, and that embrace never ended throughout our whole entire friendship. Dave, Dave, what don't we know about him we should know? Well, I believe what, what people fail to realize is that Michael was a human being. Um, throughout the years, I think he was kind of stigmatized by the media. And um, I believe that was... That wasn't really um, helpful to him or to anybody around him. I believe that Michael was a great person. He has never hurt a soul. And um, I am happy to have been his friend for all these years and been a dedicated friend. One artist who got that opportunity was Acom. A couple of years ago, Michael invited him to a studio in hopes of writing new music. What resulted was one of the most memorable moments of Akon's life. Like, my favorite, favorite moments was the, the day we actually met, because I didn't expect him to be that cool. You know what I'm saying? I love movies. He was a movie goer. He loves movies as well. And he was like, yo, man, I got to take you to this theater, this new technology they got. It's like 4D. Like, it feels like, you know, the images are right in front of you, like you're actually in the midst of it. And I was like, nah, I know 3D. He's like, no, listen, you got to check this out. I said, well, let's go. And he paused for a minute. He's like, okay, let's do it tomorrow. <laughs> and I'm saying to myself, okay, I don't know how we expect to go to the movies, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, this is Michael Jack. Like, how the hell are we going to actually go to the movies? So the next day, you know, he calls my room. We was both staying at the Palm in, in Vegas. He's like, you ready? I'm ready. I was like, yeah, let me get dressed. But at the time, I thought he was just joking. I didn't think he was really... I thought he was going to probably just rent, you know, we go through the back late, late night or something. This is broad daylight. And so he got the... He grabbed the kids. They look normal. Mike comes out. He has his disguise on, you know. So I start laughing. <laughs> because I didn't, I didn't even recognize him, you know. It wasn't like he had a fake mustache or he had fake a wig or nothing. He just had a simple hoodie on. So when you look at it, he, he could have easily passed to be a Saudi or somebody like that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we're going into the mall. We get on the elevator, go down. We're going, we're going through the, the little the, the hotel where they have the IMAX thing. And as soon as we walk in, all these kids just start coming running towards us, you know? So I'm like, oh, damn, I think they know who he is. And they just, all the kids just caught running up to me asking me for an autograph. So I'm like, okay, I should just go ahead and should I just toss him off before they recognize who he is or just play it cool? 
So he look, he shakes my his head and like as if yeah go ahead do what you gotta do. So I see them signing autographs, taking pictures, and I'm looking at these kids' faces and they not even knowing that Mike is standing right next to me. Like, if they only knew this guy was standing right next, you know how much havoc that would have caused up in that place. So we get into the theater and then the manager greets us up front. So he comes and hands us the tickets. We're all seated. So as we you know talking. I, sometimes I forget that he's supposed to be in his disguise, you know. And I keep calling him Mike. <laughs> right, and this little girl hears it. She's like, and she looks over, and I think she recognized him. Like, I really think she did. So then when I realized she was peeping, then I start calling him Dave. <laughs> but she wasn't stupid. So she runs up, shoo, full speed, goes all the way to the top of the theater. And I see her whisper, and I look up, and the girl's just pointing. And I know she's not pointing at me. Like, I know this. And I think he kind of felt it, too. So right before the movie was over, we just all got up and started walking out. But by the time we got to the car, everybody in that place knew that possibly that could have been him. <laughs> it was just the funniest thing, man. The three bodyguards he trusted with his life, speaking out, for the first time, Ashley Banfield spent three days with the men who put their lives on the line for the King of Pop. Now, no matter what you think about Jackson, what you hear from these men may change how you feel. As for Michael's sometimes bizarre appearance, they say these bandages had nothing to do with secret surgeries. Was he concealing an injury with those bandages? No. That disguise to him was a, the burn victim look. Just it was like a disguise? A, it was a disguise to him. When you saw him coming downstairs, getting ready to get in the car with the bandages, what did you think? Something's up with him. Yeah, what's going on? Yeah, something's up. Mm -hmm. Did no. you ever tell him? How could you tell him that? Right. Mm -hmm. He's coming down with the kids, so we can't say, like, what the hell you got on, sir? They didn't come around much. And when they did come, they came unexpected. And uh, we would make Mr. Jackson aware that you know, one of your family members is outside the gate, would like to see you. And he would sometimes ask, do they have an appointment? Michael would ask if his family members had appointments? Yes. When his father came, he was like, do, you know, does he have an appointment? But they say that didn't stop Michael's youngest brother, Randy, from trying. There was another occasion when Randy came to the house and crashed the security gate with his vehicle. I drew my weapon on him, and first thing out of his mouth was, get that gun out of my face, or I'm calling the press, right. which took me Unbelievable. back. Unbelievable. We made Mr. Jackson aware that your brother Randy is downstairs asking to see you very adamantly. And uh, What did Michael say? He was not happy. Did he see him? No. No. Randy Jackson admits he was there that night, but denies he ever set foot on the property. And as for that much-talked-about family intervention for Michael's alleged drug abuse, they say they were there for that, too. And he said, I'll only see my brothers. They never got into the house. No, he came outside. He came into the uh, trailer. security trailer. Right. He met his brothers in the security trailer. Right. right. Absolutely. How was Michael afterwards? Fine. He didn't seem upset? No, just he just left the trailer and went back in the house. Did he seem like he had a drug problem? A drug problem? No. Not a drug problem? Not a problem. Not a problem. Certainly there were times that he gave the appearance that he was probably high on something. He was, yeah, he was, he was yeah. intoxicated Very in some clear, way, but so. not, I wouldn't say a problem, no. They say they weren't in L.A. when Jackson died, but were among thousands of people at the Staples Center for the memorial. I looked around. I looked at a lot of celebrities, a lot of stars. Where were they? And it just made me just wonder where were they or where were, they? were these some of the people that turned their back on him after the second trial? The guy was so alone. You know? where, where were they? And I just wanted to say I love him so much. To see Paris on that stage. That, it's uh, unbelievable. That, that, uh, it's unbelievable. That hurt me. I don't even want to talk about it. Yeah, that, uh, it was a quiet ride home. And Dave Dave, yes, that's his name, Dave Dave. He was David Rothenberg. He was set on fire in 1983, suffered, as you can see, terrible scars. So as we, you know, talking, I, sometimes I forget that he's supposed to be in the disguise, you know. And I keep calling him Mike. <laughs> right, and this little girl hears it. She's like, and she looks over, and I think she recognized him. Like, I really think she did. So then when I realized she was peeping, then I start calling him Dave. That disguise to him was a, the burn victim look. Just it was like a disguise? A, it was a disguise to him. So he got the, he grabbed the kids. They look normal. Mike comes out. He has his disguise on, you know. 
How did he find out about you, Dave? Um, he heard about me, and he had contacted me. Um, songs come at the strangest times. I could be walking uh, through a park or something, and it'll just hit you. Um, boy, uh, every time I get a platinum album, uh, it's never taken lightly on my behalf. I'm always honored, and uh, it's great thanks, you know. Um, they look normal. Mike comes out. He has his disguise on. That disguise to him was a, the burn victim. And Dave Dave, yes, that's his name. So then when I realized she was peeping, then I start calling him Dave. When you go about writing, uh, what happens? Um, songs come at the strangest times. I could be walking, uh... How did he find out about you, Dave? Um, he heard about me, and he had contacted me. And they knew the world wasn't ready to see that Michael Jackson, so they had to keep him alive. Remember what I said prior, they've been cloning since 1945. So Michael comes back two years later, he looks nothing like the real Michael Jackson, but people buy into it. They still, he can still dance. Because the clones is, is good mimicker. They're good, they're good at mimicking, man, that's what they do. So he got all his moves, but he was a little bit stiffer. I don't know if y'all, look at the old Michael, and then look at the new Michael. He's a little bit stiffer, okay? Now, when Michael first came back, didn't nobody really know how to take it, all right? Um, Cause I believe, I can't recall if Billy Jean came out before the Pepsi commercial, but Michael, Michael sold his soul way before then because he did the Wiz commercial when he, Billy Jean was even thought of, when he did the, not commercial, the Wiz play, he said you can't get in you can't get out the game michael sold his soul a long time ago because uh joe jackson sold his children out long ago and joe jackson forced his kids to have sex with barry Gordy and quincy jones and amongst the other executive producers them boys was molested long ago all right that's about michael you've put up some very strange tweets of late about cloning mm -hmm. What is about cloning? Do you, do you want to get cloned or are celebrities getting cloned? Um, yeah, man, I think people should look it up, man. I, I don't really want to say too much, but I will say uh, do your own research. You sound and, like a conspiracy theorist. It. I'm not really a conspiracy theorist. There's no more conspiracy. I know, I know. And so it's, it's really up to each person to do their own research and, and come to your own truths, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like we as people listen too much to what somebody tells us and we don't actually go background check and really say, hmm, you know what, that really don't add up. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, when you really look at, at, at a lot of different things and you start to think, and so what I like to do is I like to provoke thought, you know, and provoking thought is is the least, the least you can do. You can't make somebody believe something. You really gotta just provoke thought. Would you like to be cloned? Would I like to be? Yeah. Um, am I already cloned? Oh, are you already cloned? I, I'd rather not say. But, uh, <laughs> that means there's a possibility that you could already be cloned. There, yeah, there's a possibility. <laughs> but, you know, I know I'm me because my fingernails look the same and I have dreams too. And also, too, y'all need to uh, pay attention to these other celebrities when they're leaving hints. They're leaving clues all over the place. Everybody can't talk. Everybody can't talk because, you know, they got kids or, you know, they made some type of agreement. But pay attention. Everybody who's in this shit or, or who's in this industry or who has a clone is not evil or malicious. Some people just got born into this shit, like me. It's not just about uh, copying, copying a person. It's about, it's about uh, consciousness transfer. And it started with MK Ultra, and the reason why this is important is because it's a lot of people that are unwillingly participating in this shit, and they don't even fucking know it. It's, it's mind control, and it started it started with it started with Germany, it started uh, after World War II. Uh, all the Nazis um, were, you know, escorted, VIP'd in, all the top uh, scientists and and military personnel were uh, um, were harbored in the United States and South America. And also, prior to that, the Nazis went to Antarctica. 
And a lot of the reason why Admiral Byrd went to Antarctica was because the Nazis went in, were in Antarctica. Yes, Warner Von Braun, exactly. Fucking props, Aaron Badescu. I don't know if I'm saying that right, my bad. But um, uh, Warner Von Braun is actually the... He, said, he actually started NASA, I believe. Um, and on his... On Warner Von Braun's uh, tombstone... He has a Bible verse that talks about the firmament. So, um, I thought that was interesting. But, so anyway, after World War II, the Nazis went to, uh, they went to Antarctica and found this fucking supercomputer. Um, and this supercomputer was, uh, I ain't got no lighter. Here we go. And so, this supercomputer was already there. And under the fucking ice and um, it's kind of like that movie Prometheus where they go find that spaceship and it's like a supercomputer already in there and so uh, a part of the reason why Admiral Byrd went down there was they made it seem like he was just trying to explore Antarctica but he was trying to go see what the fuck the Nazis was doing and he got his ass turned back if you look at that interview it looks it looks like he's not really telling the truth about what he saw. Like you can tell something is like on his heart when he's talking. Like go look at that interview about Admiral Byrd. It's not a very good start, is it? Look at me. Look at me. Look at me here. Eye contact is absolutely crucial for an interrogator. Because what you're trying to do is to get him to concentrate on you. The eyes are the windows to the soul. It's a very true statement. The eyes will move in various locations on the reaction to various questions that are put to them. There are six areas. One, two, three, four, five, six. If you want to recall something, a past event or something of that nature, then the majority of people will move up into the top right. If they're making things up, it'll come from the top left. If you touch a raw nerve, then the eyes will move down to the left or to the bottom right. The way in which you can get around this is to train yourself to keep looking straight ahead as soon as a question is asked to you. Because otherwise, at one point, you're going to trip up and your eyes will move to one location or the other. Admiral, a, an expedition to which I believe you're the advisor is now en route. Uh, what is that expedition doing? Well, that's the icebreaker Atka. And it's a reconnaissance expedition. It's going down to the South Pole area to make certain observations and to, to look for some bases. They will be back in April and they will report back. And upon the information we get from that undertaking, uh, we will base the bigger expedition that's to follow. Uh, is that very definitely? And so, so basically, um, uh, the Nazis coming to America and South America is what started Operation Paperclip, and it's what started the the CIA and the NSA. And so, uh, the Central Intelli Intelligence Agency is actually um, is actually uh, like all of the, the major Hollywood studios, they're actually the CIA. And that's why all this information gets put into these movies. Um, it's, it's sort of like a soft disclosure, um, sort of like a predictive programming. I don't know. But like, you ever see these movies and it's just like, why the fuck are these secrets in, these, in this fucking movie? And it's like, that's why the CIA is behind it. And it's not even just like behind it. Like, they literally are Hollywood. And so, um... Uh, where was I? So anyway, I'm trying to trying to be brief. So basically, uh, with Operation Paperclip, that's what started all the MK Ultra test uh, tests and them grabbing people involuntarily, all the missing kids and missing people. They were used for MK Ultra, and what they would do is they would they would experiment with tr uh, consciousness transfer where they could transfer your consciousness. And and also, um, they could replicate DNA. They could replicate your, your body. They could replicate your body, put you in another body, train you to be an assassin or uh, fucking anything. And and then transfer you, and then, and then wipe your memory and transfer you back into your original body. And, and you think that you just had a crazy ass dream. 
and and it, it happens different it happens different for 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 different people like certain people were like kidnapped and kept on on these bases you know what i'm saying and then maybe they were like brain they were they trained them transferred their consciousness trained them put them back in their original, original body put them back into society as some hollywood actor or artist that just pops up out of nowhere you've never heard of them or a president or a news anchor or the CEO of a huge multi-billion dollar company. You know, it's, it's, it, it's, they basically brainwashed and made sleeper agents out of all of the key factors, the, the, the key integral positions in society, including news anchors. I think that's a huge thing because as you saw uh, the whole shit with Al Roker, when they said, make room for the Holy Spirit, and he froze up for 17 seconds. That's some MK Ultra shit. So, I'm still here alive. I don't know why. I don't know why I can talk. Um, maybe it's because I have some type of amnesty. Or maybe it's because somebody extremely, extremely close to me is a Mason. And I'm protected in that sense. I don't know. But if they wanted to do something with me, I wouldn't have even gotten this far to telling y'all about cloning. So, to the people telling me... Bob, I fear for your life. Y'all, don't worry. I'm in good hands. Just continue spreading the word. Satan runs everything. So when you when you hear about people talking about the Jews, or Jews don't run, the Jewish don't run shit because they're the synagogues. The real Jews are the Hebrews. So when these people talk about running the world and cha- they they are not changing anything. Satan runs it all. So that's why I like when Bob Bob talked about. You must, you know, cause you found out who the Rockefellers were and Rothschild, and you think you solved it. I like when he said, "That's not it. It's something much darker." See, that's when I know someone's giving him a pass, cause he don't go into detail. Because if no one was giving him a pass, you'd be just like me. I go into detail. No man controls me. I don't belong to nobody's club. That's why I go into detail. Bob will tell you things, but he'll cut it off. So. I think he's been given a pass to tell y'all because they know most people ain't going to believe it no way. But that's the truth. The bankers don't run nothing. They own stuff, but they're not the ones that control it. It's a deeper picture. Something dark and gloomy controls it, and that's Satan. That's why his show, Lucifer, is doing strong. He ain't going to let his show fail. When he controls Hollywood, he, if they let that show go off there, he's going to erupt. That's giving him glory. You see that? So, yeah, Bob is definitely on point, but I know, I believe he's been given a pass to say what he say, especially when he th- said that most of y'all find out who the bankers was and you think you done figured it out. When, and uh, when he said it's something much darker than that, I already knew. And then, it, you know, he didn't go into detail, but he didn't have to. The truth of the matter is, B.O.B., Satan controls it all. That's why in order to have a household name, you got to sell your soul. He want to make sure that you never get a crown from Yahweh being Yahweh. He want to make sure that you have no hopes of getting into the next life. That's why he wants you to sell everything, denounce the most high, blood sacrifices and rituals. He know the most high know you aware of what you're doing because every time you do a blood sacrifice, you pierce your fingers and put it in the books and sign. George Bush doesn't care about black people. Please call. In the past few days, America and people have been stepping up, have been stepping up to donate money, to do all they can to help people in New Orleans and all over. Remember when I told you Tupac is dead? Yeah, Tupac did die. I was correct. I stand correct. And I quote that and I stand by that. But years later, I found out that that wasn't the real Tupac. That was his clone. <sighs> I mean, I know when you first hear this shit, how you feel. Cause I feel the same way. I f- I like this bullshit, right? That's the first thing you're going to say. These motherfuckers of the elite, this Illuminati, these Lord knows the father going if the Lord has to intervene soon. Because they, they're fucking monsters. 
these people are fucking monsters. And, I, and I'm, what I'm saying is, here's the kicker. Satan is already, the Lord hasn't let Satan go all the way, but they already doing what they do. Man, goddamn, since 1945, they've been cloning? Really? And this shit is real, man. Anything, anybody they feel that's talented, very talented, they ain't gonna let you die. Not if you work for them. They ain't gonna let you go. Tupac, yes, they wanted Tupac's brain. They wanted him to stay around so they can manip manipulate. Now, how they do when they clone, man, Tupac could be anywhere underground living as the Illuminati has him under, uh, what, patrol. Like, they have underground dungeons. And these underground dungeons is not as bad as you think. They have a playground. They have fake grass. They all of that stuff. They have a they have shopping mall. I'm telling you what I know. A lot of people who you don't see no more that was once famous are living there right now. They grow old. The the point of the matter is when they sell their soul, they don't want to die. Tupac never wanted to die. He sold his soul long ago. Okay? And he's he he sold his soul. And he said it in too many of his songs. I sold my soul. He said all the fucking time. Just go back and listen to the shit. He just ain't saying it to be saying it. Eminem said it too. These guys telling you the truth, but you don't want to accept it because you're an idolater. Now, let us know that the producers, I'm talking about the elite, the so-called Jew ass, the Khazars, the synagogues, have performed fellatio on Tupac and they turned them out. When they put him in the bathtub with the gold between his legs, that's a bitch move. He was their pinup bitch. Now, go back and Google all men in bathtubs, and I guarantee you they're big time celebrities that took pictures in bathtubs butt naked. That's a turnout position. That's a submission position. Okay? Pac, all, Pac threw up the pyramid on that uh, album called All Eyes on Me. He threw up the pyramid. A lot of y'all thought that was a love sign. He was just putting his hands up, man. Come on, so. I, don't, I broke this down a lot. There's some things I didn't know, though. But I broke down so much Tupac shit back shit almost 10 years ago. I was the first one who did Tupac on a breakdown, on, on like a documentary. It's just appalling to me that people can't accept it. Do I believe Tupac's still alive? I, know, I don't believe. At the time, everything lined up for Pac to be dead. But after four years, after I made, well, actually five years after I made that Pac movie, that documentary, I discovered new things. I used to always wonder, why come Suge so bold and that like it's no big deal that Pac is dead? He, he was rejoicing. Even in the car. Um, Suge looked like he had a lot on his mind. And I think when I did the film, I said, Suge knew someone was going to go down that night. Yeah, he did. Suge knew Pop was getting ready to do a Machiavelli. He was going to fake his death. And then I went to that autopsy that everybody else had, and that was a fake. That was a Photoshop. Afini Shakur knew her son wasn't dead. Pac went to Cuba. Now, y'all probably saying, well, what's the big deal? They at least made a whole lot of money, but he has to get that approved. Elvis Presley faked his death, but he had it approved. Tupac did it on his own. He paid a bodyguard, he paid Suge, and he paid, I think, a couple of more people. And he had a lot of money, so each of them got paid one point, like two or 1.5 million to fake his death. And he went to Cuba. That's the truth. So when the elites found out he faked his death, they didn't want to say he wasn't dead. They wanted to keep him dead because he was making so much money off his music. But then, if you notice, they went after the Shakurs hard. I mean, every anybody that was named Shakur, they interviewed or they put in jail or they harassed. You notice that? That's because Pac did not get it approved to the elite. So if Pac is alive now, he should be late forties or early fifties. You see Wu Tang, right? You think they are hard? You don't think Method Man been in the bed with Jewish men because he have? Now, if to look at that brother, he hardcore, huh? That dude been in so man, please with transgenders as well Kevin G Kevin Gates or Bates Kevin Gates same thing he's a switch hitter he'll play hard when he come on uh, 106 or what I want to say what the breakfast club he always man uh, my wife you know she want to play with my booty and I was like I ain't down with that that's dead giveaway ain't nobody talking about booty but see 
a man that in a, intertwined with other men he brings up gay scenarios to make himself don't look gay but realistically he is gay but he figured if he put it out there he protects his masculinity but really he is a switch hitter Kevin Gates is bisexual alright and he worships Satan on a regular he just like the rest of them and he drink blood hell a uh, uh, tiger from um, the Birdman count Birdman screwed tiger that's why he went on the tattoo craving. He tattooed his body to death. Lil Wayne admitted Birdman had him. Slim, his brother too. He get down like that. He admitted on camera, Bird got me. They're going to get y'all too. That new rapper, I sucked Birdman dick for the deal, man. Yeah, I sucked the dick. Birdman fucked me for the deal. They telling y'all. Y'all just don't want to believe it. A lot of niggas hate because I'm my mom fucking rich gang and shit. And you niggas keep trying to test me. Y'all keep trying to test me. I was on media takeout on World Star and shit. Yeah, Birdman fucked me. He fucked me in the ass for the deal. I'm going to be real. Birdman <laughs> fucked me for the deal, man. I suck Birdman dick. Y'all act like they just lying. They're just publicity stunts. They're not lying, man. They do women worse. They got more holes to fill. And they just make women do some outrageous shit. Y'all don't think they drink period blood? They do? I told y'all this shit years ago. Y'all thought, y'all's crazy. Now this shit coming out. They drink urine. They eat poop. Now they showed you in certain movies how they walk women around. Man, they take the baddest bit, Alicia Keys. They have walked Alicia Keys around executive offices. Put her ass on the table and let her shit in the middle of the table and motherfuckers eat it. Why you think a lot of these women try to get fat? They do it deliberately. Because when you big and they don't really want you when you get like out of shape and you ain't attractive no more. They don't like that. They want you to stay petite and sexy. Okay? Like Kelly Clarkson, when she first came in, she was beautiful. Kelly gained that weight. Yeah, I know uh, having children make you gain weight, but Kelly enjoyed being big because they don't want her as much. What's that girl named Demi Lovato? They done dug her out. Kelly, P Carrie Perry. Hell, she got an album with the all scene. I, they done did so much shit to her. And uh, some of the women, they, they tell, don't gain weight. Stay favorite. They'll tell you, I know you're getting sick of the rituals and us fucking you and eating poop, but we want you to stay slim we want you to keep a nice weight y'all want to know why they get drunk all the time and why they stay high and they tat up their bodies a lot of times they get tattoos because they 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 the men have other men penetrating the anal it takes their spirit and makes them feminine so the tattoos make them hard again why do they stay high intoxicated because they know the shit they have witnessed sometimes you don't have to get fucked in your butt by a man, but they witness a lot of stuff. They seen little kids get raped before their eyes and they have to deal with that shit. They seen the cloning laugh. They know that stuff exists, man. They know Satan, they know Satan is real in this business. They done seen people get killed. They threaten their lives and a week later they take them out. Or take somebody out in their family. They seen people sign their name on the dotted line with, with their name in blood so that they can make $20 million because they've done it. And when they when they think about they off their moms for $20, 30000000 million, like Kanye West, Jennifer Hudson, and amongst a lot of others, a lot of others, they can't deal with that, man. They bug out. That's why they stay high. All of them been chipped. And y'all probably say, well, what's the point of chipping them? So they stay under mind control. They know what they're saying. They know what they're thinking. When these people sell their soul, they don't want to die because they know what's coming. So they want to prolong their life and they do it by cloning. But the, the, <laughs> that's not them. You see, the first, the, the real you can only stay alive for so long, but they take every kind of drug. They sleep in capsules. Man, they do everything to try to prolong their life. All right, they're not the Rockefellers. Have what? nine ten plastic surgeries he got a bad heart so what do you think he doing he went kill somebody to get that heart because a heart transplant take a long time to get they went kill somebody with the same scenario of dna to give him that heart because they don't want to die yo all right the movie called uh hostel now i know a lot of y'all look at these quarantine fan films and say well that's just a movie yash no 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 the movie 
called hostile. It exists. This is what does rich people do. They get around each other and they watch each other. They watch people torture each other and they get off on it. I mean, they literally sit there with Don Perignon, Christa, whatever they want to drink, but most of them like blood. And they're sitting there in a damn uh, high chair or they sitting in the bleed. They sitting in comfort. It's just like a little mini stadium. If you really want to get a glimpse of what I'm talking about, when I told you about eyes wide shut and that shit coming to pass, y'all believe in it now because there's too many people talking about it, blowing the whistle, right? Well, I'm telling you something about cloning. When they want to experiment on somebody, they'll make five clones of that one person, but take the real clone and reserve it. And then they take that copy of you and put it in an arena and everybody want to see you bleed. They want to see you stab yourself. And then this is the sickening part. They'll let you bleed out and then go drink your blood and then cut pieces of you and eat it. There are some people out there that's in the Illuminati world that's very rich billionaires. They can't eat regular food because they're so hooked on human flesh. They do all this shit at the clone lab. Everything, if you want to be in Hollywood, you want to be rich, famous, they, you got to go to the, the, the clone lab. See, Ara has been cloned. They know she is very talented dancing while she ain't a, no type of singer, but she can dance. She's been cloned. That's not the real Sierra. She's under hypnosis. She's been chipped. They done made three, four different Sierras. They did the same thing with Janet Jackson. She's been chipped and cloned too. They keep them around because they keep making revenue from them, making money. When you have sex with Janet Jackson, you're meeting her representative. That's why y'all better, men, y'all better stop being attracted to the big old booties and big breasts. I'm just telling you, if you better come with a spiritual uh, perspective because these women they're not who they say they are they're representative of cloning labs and they're looking for righteous brothers to bring back to the lab to experiment on and then they wipe your brain clean the, the point I'm making is that once they put that chip on you they get you to do anything okay MLK equals clone Every rich person has a clone. Now, I know a lot of y'all saying, well, what if you was in a franchise and you made money Would they come after you? You cannot be rich in this world without being a part of the Illuminati or being cloned. You cannot have $5 million in your bank and not be a part of the brotherhood. I don't care if you own a chicken joint, a laundromat, if you if you got a car lot, you are not going to have that type of money and you're not going to be a part of their program. They, This is how they get you, man. I said it prior. They always want to invite you somewhere. And most of the time, they'll pay for it. And you're going to go for it because you, oh man, I must be all right. They're paying for everything, room and board. It's in the food. They're going to serve you. Uh, uh, they're going to they're gonna put it in your drink. And if you person say, I don't want nothing to eat that night, and you just say, he ain't eating, he ain't drinking nothing either. They got plan B. They're going to have a beautiful girl bump up against you. She has a little needle that's going to feel like a mosquito bite, but that's a that's just like a pin, a, a, like a needle head she's going to hit you with that's going to knock your ass out within 60 seconds. You see all that James Bond shit? That shit exists, man. And while you're sleeping, they put a chip in your neck, your head, or whatever they decide to put it, and you become MLK. And if you're real valuable and smart, they're going to clone you and take the real you and put you away and let your clone act like you. Okay? It's not an entertainment music industry sports thing. It's everywhere. If you're a person that came out with a software that generate millions of dollars, they're coming after you. Remember that dude that made Flappy Bird or whatever that thing was called? He was getting 56 million downloads a day. They came after him. He said he ain't going to do it no more. He pulled it, remember y'all? He pulled it because he was getting too much attention. The money was coming in like crazy. They drafted him and said, you're going to work for us. They made him come back and they put him on the hip. He was fighting. But they, they met him. He went out to meet or whatever. He said he didn't want no part of him. They shot him up with some shit. He came back under hypnosis. And now they pip in his brain to make other software. He works for them now. He's in the clone lab and they ain't let him go home. A lot of times when you hear about people that's dead, they're not dead. Gaddafi never died. Gaddafi clone died. But he never died. Okay. What makes them want to clone you? 
a person that's all over YouTube, you know, you're becoming famous, people listening to you. And if you notice, these dudes are proud, man, poofed up. They they love the spotlight. They like being on everybody's channel. They put on a little decoration. They six point star. Another guy who's been chipped is Professor Griff. This is why he can get on, talk a lot of shit and tell so much truth and tell so many lies. Come on, man. When Alex Jones gave his book, uh, not Horatia, <laughs> when Alex Jones pumped his book up, I knew that they had already got to him. He's on the MLK. Okay. Uh, Alex Jones also been chipped. Where if they get to where they don't want to be a part of that no more, they'll cut their chip off and they'll just start having eternal pains. <clears throat> Speaking of pain, Bernie Mac. Bernie Mac was killed, man. <laughs> Let me just explain this. Bernie Mac sold his soul. They don't even let you see things like this until you sell your soul. So when Bernie Mac uh, got that show, he had sold his soul. The Bernie Mac show. Then he started getting movies. But way before then, uh, he was just doing comedian. Didn't show Bernie nothing. When Bernie started getting his feet wet, they started taking him to Pandora's box. His mind was blown. But then they put him under the oath where he won't talk. You know, throw the goat up here and there. Put your hands in pyramid. That's an oath. <laughs> if, I die, uh, if I die all of a sudden, they will be pending this. <laughs> I don't want nobody to enjoy plan. shit. I, <laughs> I don't want nobody <laughs> driving my that's boat. My I don't want nobody <laughs> sitting up there. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm all saying. that's just yep. going back. Yep. yep. All that's it. just going back. I, it's a damn shame how Bernie left his peepers. I ain't leaving nobody right. nothing. I got my wheel all done. I got it on tape and everything. Yeah, everything is here. <laughs> good, good wheel, evening. you on tape? I'm not here now. <laughs> I'm not here now. <laughs> but I just want to say to all my aunts, uncle, you know, that I had a good time while here on Earth. I'm gone now. There's no funeral. I know you all pissed off about that right now. But I'm gonna leave you all just what you all left me. Shit. I'm not giving. I pay all my life. I paid y'all rent, y'all condo, <laughs> helped out, helped out, <laughs> school tuition. I just don't want nobody banging my wife when I'm gone, sitting on my bed, wearing my robe, my jewelry, and driving my boat. Is that selfish? No. Is that selfish? You're just letting it all go back. I'm letting it go back. Well, considering the semi-classic nature of the vehicle, to most, he was known as Bernie Mac. He's faded. Yeah, but it's custom. Actor, comedian Bernard McCullough died early Saturday morning at Northwestern Memorial Hospital in Chicago. A publicist for the 50-year-old says he passed away from complications due to pneumonia. Mac also suffered from an inflammatory lung disease that had been in remission for the past three years. But his publicist said his death was not related to this condition. The Emmy and Golden Globe nominated actor is also known for his Fox television series, The Bernie Mac Show. His film credits include roles in the Ocean's Eleven franchise. No word yet on whether public services will be held. Tim McGuire, the Associated Press. So as Bernie started making more money, his name became a household name. They started taking Bernie to the clone lab because there is a thing called clone lab and they all over, the, they're not just in America, they're all over the world. All right. Um, they control them anywhere. Rich folks, they, they're, they're, and they're, they're always in places you never think they are. It's like, it could be a desert, like nothing exists. And, it, and it's this one fucking pond of water or, or some old trees. That's usually where it's at. It's underground. They got it, man. It's just like, it's just like the movies. They tell you the truth in the movies. So nevertheless, Bernie Mac was introduced to the clone lab. They, they take you there. They took him there. They let him see the, the fights. At first, he thought it was cool, you know. Uh, it was like eyes wide shut. They screwing in front of you. They doing bizarre things, man. Bestiality. You're going, damn, right? But the part that tripped him out, how they showed him. They literally showed him how they clone people. They take the real person and put them off to the left and make two more of you. It blew his mind. Just like they did the dogs, the fish, they, all of that. He was like, wait, 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 I'm tripping. That ain't a real person. Then they start, you know, they stab the person to make you see they bleed. They're real. And they can feel that pain. You understand? So his mind is blown. Now, he done been a couple of times 
and the only time they would be willing to put you in shackles so you don't talk if he's not bringing revenue but Bernie Mac is funny as hell Bernie Mac bringing a lot of money so he said we're going to let him make movies he ain't going to say nothing he know what he know what's good for him and who's going to believe him anyway right so this was heavy on Bernie very heavy on him but they already had him chipped once they take you to the clone lab you have to get chipped Steve Harvey is chipped Oprah's chipped D.L. Hughley is chipped said entertainers that's why they don't say nothing and this is what happened to Bernie when Bernie started to have these conversations they can hear everything he's saying so they made him go into pain more so they can put your body in pain he said oh I'm hurting I'm hurting I'm hurting so Bernie had a talk with Steve Harvey uh, D.L. Hughley and said the entertainer because he believed he could talk to them he's like man we gotta tell somebody about this shit man cloning people they advised him hey man this shit been going on since the 40s we're gonna make our money Steve Harvey big lip ass right so Bernie was really adamant about it. It was heavy on his head. So Bernie did the King. They let him do that tour. He came back. He still was cool. But shortly after, he did a movie. With, I believe with Samuel Jackson. I ain't for sure. And he was still good. But shortly after that movie got done, he kept bringing it up. So Steve goes and rat him out. Well, they, all, they knew what he was saying. But Steve was like, he becoming a problem. So they hold a meeting without Bernie. Bernie Mac always said he walked alone. I don't think he was walking alone at all. I think Bernie was walking with Jesus the whole time. I just hope Jesus. <laughs> now he walking with Jesus. I want to tell Mac I'll see you soon, man. Well, no, I don't mean soon. I just see you. And he asked D.L. Hughley the same things. Hey, what, what y'all? What is he saying? He's saying that we gotta, you know, we gotta expose this. Okay. They amped his chip up because the chip controlled every vital sign in your body. Bernie got real sick, went to the hospital, and they knew what was going on. Steve Harvey knew, D.L. Hughley knew, said the entertainer knew that they ratted him out, and he knew that death was coming. They knew death was coming. Bernie wasn't assured at the present time, but when he started getting real sick, he said, these motherfuckers doing this to me. But Bernie did tell his wife what was going on, and she'd been scared shitless ever since. And they didn't want him to tell her too much, so they turned it all the way up and killed him while he was in the hospital. They remember him and love him the way they do. Thank you all so much. <laughs> We got something else to show. And they didn't have to be there. They did it by remote control. That's how cloning works. And that's how the, uh, the chip works. It works by remote. So somebody could have been acting like a janitor or acting like they dare to see their loved one. Could have been sitting in a weight room and hit the remote to turn his chip up to send him to fatal, which is death. That's how Bernie Mac left here. Being ratted out by Steve. And D hell, all them niggas so fake, man. Oh. If I come to you because we just did the King's Economy, I feel like I can talk to you because Bernie wasn't kissing Steve ass. All them niggas kissed Steve ass. So Bernie have a man to man say, man, you think that shit right? Look, man, this is Steve. Look, man, whatever they doing, we ain't got nothing to do with that. Like my mama always say mind your business and all of them co-signing DL and uh, said the entertainer yes do you right man do you right and here go DL Higley I understand what you're saying Bernie but at the same time man, they've been doing this shit since the, the 40s we would I mean for us to put our nose in that man we gotta check we gotta feed our family all that type of shit beware of a nigga that always get that hot what alto voice that's a nigga you don't wanna trust but Bernie it was weighing on him because they kept inviting him back to uh, the, the clone lab. He kept literally seeing people die before his eyes. And if you want to know what I'm talking about, rent the movie Hostel. 
it may be kind of hard to find but you probably you probably can see it for free on the internet just google hostel and everything that you see in that movie is what they do in the clone lab and he was watching this he was like man this is crazy right Whitney Houston she also had to pass away because she got tired she didn't want to do it no more um, she was chipped all they did is cut her chip off and they put a face down in the water Bobby Christina was chipped too they killed her the same way now to let us know that Bobby Christina's death was um, not an accident but it was a ritual they took Bobby Christina out the damn uh, Hertz or whatever the damn car was right and they, they was gonna will, they got ready to will her body into the morgue or whatever it was a church I don't know where exactly the place was but to let us know that it was an actual ritual they had two Egyptian unks out there I don't know if y'all peep game they did the same thing with Whitney Houston now you telling me that this was an accident and now they're saying it's a boyfriend that didn't know he's a fall guy and by the way they already done shot him up with some MLK he's totally submissive have y'all been hearing about these doctors the doctor that found the cure for cancer the doctor that's found the cure for measles and, and all these other MMR yeah they found a, a cure for MMR because it's man made anyway the doctors they've been killing them why are they killing these doctors number one the doctors don't want to be a part of this uh, cloning uh, they didn't want to be a part of not telling the public that there's a cure for cancer they found a cure man for cancer one of the doctors got ready to reveal it they killed him before he could do it they found a cure for MMR to give kids autism. Did y'all know this? And they've been killing these doctors one by one. And all of these doctors didn't want nothing to do with the cloning lab. They was totally against it. They all got ready to speak on it. And they uh, they pretty much killed them off because a lot of doctors that are high end have been chipped. A lot of these doctors that's been getting killed, they have the chip in them. The MLK is nothing but cloning and they've been they got the chip in the back of their neck or their forehead whatever and when they get out of pocket and they don't do what they're supposed to do they cut their chip off and they die of a heart attack aneurysm or however you say that word in or some type of craziness that they can blame it on anything a lot of y'all want to say well did Pimp C get cloned no Pimp C was killed he didn't want to clone him they don't want it they didn't like him no way so no um Elvis Presley didn't die in that casket. Elvis Presley was under a, a drug of hypnotic that took him, that paralyzed his body for, what, four to six hours. And he was removed and lived underground. Okay? Like Adolf Hitler, he was, they cloned that. Adolf Hitler never died. He died in Brazil of old age. Steve Jobs didn't die when they said he died. They cloned him. Uh, Steve Jobs was last seen in 2014 in Brazil. Still kind of sick because they can't stop the sickness. But he was still alive. Yes, they cloned Steve uh, Jobs. They cloned Microsoft man, Bill Gates. All them guys been cloned. So a lot of times, that's not necessarily the real Bill Gates. The real Bill Gates, they work in his brain to death in a lab. He ain't came up yet. He's, he's underground. He's, he's un See, when they put you under these deep hypnosis, you don't even be submissive. You just do what they tell you. Oprah Winfrey is on the MLK and that's not the real Oprah that's not the real Lenny Kravis Now, Chris Brown hasn't been cloned, but since he's been talking so much, they're going to clone him. And I believe they clone him when he's in the Philippines. But we'll see. <laughs> because Chris Brown is so outspoken, he may just tell it like it is if he can get in his right mind. But when Chris Brown was in the Philippines, they might have cloned him. Now, who is Chris Brown handler to get him cloned and chipped? Rihanna. Now notice, notice, notice that Chris right now had, when they start putting people around you 
every other day, that's not Chris Brown. That's a reptile in Chris Brown that, that's controlling him. And in other words, that's a demigod, that's a demon of um, alien descent, but it's really reptile, uh, reptilia, which is like a um, lizard, but they have to live in human format. And we'll know, how do you know that Chris is a clone? Because he's going to have to have somebody with him 24-7. He can't be alone. Whenever a celebrity has to have somebody living with them and with them, that's because the clone can't work by itself. It has to have somebody with them. And what struck me really weird when uh, Rihanna said that she wants to be at Chris Brown's hearing when he gets ready to do his child support. I thought that was kind of weird. Rihanna is Chris Brown's handler. And she's been told that this, this is not real Chris Brown. This is going to be his who? Cloning. 85% of the people in America do not watch TV no more. They don't. Everybody's online now. So they trying to bring regular TV onto YouTube and make you pay for that shit and kick the creators to the curve. Now, having said that, there are certain creators they're going to handpick to be a part of this phenomenon and they're going to think they're being blessed, but they're not. They're going to get them to sell their soul too. So if you're a creator on YouTube, you, you're going to get handpicked. They know who they want. But guess what? They don't want no independent journalists. They don't want no real news. They don't want nothing like what I do. They want people who tell like, they want people who follow orders and tell it like they want them to tell it. They want to keep you in suspense and bullshit. And they're going to pump the LGBT community. They're going to pump transgenders community. They have channels for that. And they want to defeminize men. And they want to make women masculine. So this is the type of shit that YouTube is going to. So you see that I was ahead of the game. When I told y'all seven stages needed. Because real shit ain't going to be seen no more. When YouTube make this final. Facebook going to join suit. They ain't going to have it where y'all can talk real shit. So if you don't have a network. How you going to get the information out? 